you guys have favorites over the years of uh, merch that has either been generated from Dale Earnhardt or Dale Earnhardt Jr. or any anybody for that matter? Mm. It's not the Cabbage Patch. It's not the Cabbage <laughs> Patch kid. <laughs> or the toilet accessories, the bathroom <laughs> uh, accessories. I, I mean, I let, I can get your wheels going on one. I, I love the story, and I think I want you to tell it. Um, the Hurt's So Good ah. t-shirt for yeah. Dale Earnhardt. What year was that, and what was the occasion, Joe? Well, um, he won the poll after being hurt. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so I'm up in Pennsylvania, uh, back to my dad's retiring, 65, and um, I find out Friday Dale won the poll, I mean the poll, and he, and he comes out, it hurts so good. I pick up the phone, I call Ken Barbie, um, who we've done business with, Motorsports Tradition, he prints. I said, hey, Ken, I just got a call from Dale, which I didn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, which I did. I said, he wants you to um, go in tomorrow morning and produce some It Hurts So Good shirts and um, and send it to me, and um, I'll pick them up, fly them into Binghamton, New York, and I'll pick them up, print as many as you can. Oh, because he won the Paul Watkins Glen, yeah. right? And he was yeah. hurt. Yeah, he was yeah. hurt. And he's and, been hurt. And, and he said it hurts, you know, hurts so good. Yeah. yeah. And, and I said, Dale wants a Paul shirt. And um, he's like, it was Friday night. And he's like, leave me alone. I mean, it's too late. <laughs> And I know he gets up early, so I call him 6 o'clock in the morning. I said, Earnhardt's up already, and I got the second call. <laughs> and, and, and Dale doesn't even know. It's probably sh- a true statement that Dad was up already. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, he's like, you're kidding me. I said, no. And, and he just told me to call you. And, and he said, are you serious? I said, yes, man. So he calls his whole team in, and he's – the only thing he has there with a shirt is the back of a fan club shirt. Hmm. We had fan the back of it was a you know E club or yeah, whatever yeah. whatever that, and he and he goes and he prints on the front of the shirt. It hurts so good at the pole on the gland, you know, and um, he puts them in a box and he goes down to the airport and PDQ in the airport in Charlotte pretty darn quick, and they fly to Binghamton, New York. And all the boxes he could fit in his car, like on Saturday or <laughs> Sunday. Saturday, no, Saturday yeah, at, at Saturday. Um, five o'clock. He had to, he had to print till then. Wow! And um, my buddy Jimmy picks me up, and his Corolla, which <laughs> this important, the little small car, and he we're going there because he's um, helping us um, um, on the souvenir rig, and um, so he picks me up, and we go to Binghamton to pick up these boxes. And there's these big boxes, and it's filled up, and they're still warm because they come out of the oven. And, um, and the guys are, what is this? And, and the guy, what's in that box? And I open it up. I say, here's a shirt. And I give him a shirt. So we carry him out to the Corolla, and boxes you don't. You unbox them all. We have to unbox them to get them in the car because you can't, you know, you have to shove them underneath. And so, so you have a Corolla full of just loose I mean, wrapped t shirts yeah, in plastic. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we, we drive the painter post. Um, Holiday Inn. I said, Jimmy, and now it's like midnight. So I'm glad bars are open late. And they were open. <laughs> and um, and we're sitting there, and um, we're just talking how crazy it was. I said, Jimmy, these race fans are going to see those shirts and are going to bust your windows. <laughs> and he's like, I hope not. So we get to the track that next morning, and I called Don. I said, hey, man, you got to show Dale this shirt. Oh, Don Hawk? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because now he has to prove everything. And – um um, he gets in, he brings in the Dale, and you know, now it's Dale's idea. He loves it. I mean, right? <laughs> what a gamble. Yeah, yeah. Well, but you know, that was literally the first hot, hot market t shirt. Yeah. I mean, it was hot market. <laughs> right. You printed on demand, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> yeah. And um, then Dr. Jerry Punch put it up, and boom. So Chris Williams is out there selling them, and I only had seven or 800 of them. That's all we could fit in there, and that's all we had. <laughs> Our time to print. And then all of a sudden, yeah. ISC comes after me and says, you're in trouble. Um, you didn't get approval to use, but I want those shirts taken off the wall. Wait, approval? Approval Why, for what? The, yeah. on, on the pole, on the Glen. Uh, 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 for they're the Watkins saying, Glen, Mark. They, they're uh, saying, they're, yeah. but I said at, at the Glen. I didn't use Watkins yeah, Glen. right, right, right. Uh, <laughs> oh, and, and, and I said, um, I can't take them off the wall. He said, why? I said, they're sold out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I said, hey, I'm going to keep on producing them. We'll pay you. Back off. What's your problem? This is good, not bad. And um, I eventually, I think I ended up paying them like $11,000 from it. We just kept on printing those shirts and printing those shirts. And um, I told Bybee when I got back, I, I didn't tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but, but, but 
Dale quickly embraced what an idea. Yeah. And then awesome. Dr. Jerry Punch makes him look so smart. Yeah. The, the astute businessman Dale Earnhardt is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that may have been my favorite shirt. The one that surprises me, I still to this day, uh, you know, the Dale call. Yeah. Oh, that was you know, the commercial, that was a good one. The commercial, you know, goes out there, it becomes a thing, and Joe thinking. Oh, that made me so mad I didn't know about that up front. Yeah. I mean. You could have planned oh, a little bit of time. No. And then we had to go and we had to find a guy who could go. They could make anything, you know, but. And uh, we found the right guy, and, and they made it. And we made a bunch of them. But, like, when I saw that first yeah. commercial, yeah. I'm like, how do we miss this opportunity? <laughs> Just got to know. That's it. Yeah. yeah, people got to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should have. Maybe we should have. We missed that. Um, did, I mean, your dad. I mean, there's, does anything stick out in terms of your dad's merch? <sighs> die cast or anything? Do you have a favorite piece of die cast? My favorite piece of die cast is the silver car. Yeah, it's Just by far history. my favorite. Just the history. I mean, it's super good history. looking, cool, um, and a tribute. I mean, it was yeah, a perfect yeah, tribute. Yeah, yeah. It was, that you talk about authentic and natural. That was just what could be better than that. Yeah, because they're such a good part of our sport, Winston. Yeah, I think those iconic moments really make. I mean, like sitting here looking at this. Um, <clears throat> Bud car here, like um, the uh, baseball car. I mean, oh. you know, I love that car, but I also think just because of the connection to that iconic moment of Dale winning that race, you know, after dad's death, like there's just a lot of those things fit together for me, you know, in terms of, of what I liked about programs or diecast or different things like that. Are y'all saying that the Dirty Mo Media diecast wasn't the most uh, profitable or the, the, one of the most successful in your career, Joe? Is that what you're trying to say? It's sitting in front of you because it's your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, like That I understand. I did love it. it your awesome. dad was into paint schemes as much as your brother. Oh, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. He was pretty big into that. Um, yeah. That's fantastic. Well, uh, we honestly would get very aggravated with the approval process with Dad because I mean he they were they were sticklers about so many things. I mean the way the faces looked, I mean it, it they you know you showed them something and you might have to make massive changes and and changing artwork's not easy. No, um, not easy at all. I'm yeah. learning more and more about it just now, even with Ryan Williams, our graphic designer, and the the it's not an easy process. No, <laughs> yeah, Ryan Williams will buy your thirty year stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah, there yeah, are yeah, people yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he is yeah. one of the 35 yeah. and under <laughs> that yeah. likes collectibles. You, you talk about Dale and the approval process and everything. And um, Dale would just, he wanted to know everything. And he just so much, just mad as this, mad as that. And I said, Dale, please do me a favor. Give me three things I got to think about every time I make a decision. And quit asking so many questions. If I think of these three things that are important to you every time I make a decision, I'll try to make better decisions th the way you would yeah. want. But quit asking so many questions. <laughs> um, and he said, okay, number one, um, just like you work for me, I work for Bill France. He's Superman. Don't tug on his cape. Mm. I mean, boom. Advice number one he gave me. Advice number two is um, without Richard Childers and out my sponsors – I really don't have anything. And he had all the rights to that. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that earlier. He said, but we really have to be cognizant and take care of um, Richard and the sponsors. And number three, he said, Teresa's heavily, heavily involved in this business. And she is really involved in this business. And you just have to recognize that and, um, and, and respect that. And there may be things you and I do and um, – but, you know, we're going to have to do because we have to do it. But she's going to be right and you're going to be wrong. <laughs> and I didn't know what that meant. And um, so you go and Goodwrench, GM's a $11 million dollar customer, and they have this free oil lube and do this and get that. And there's just a simple three hat to get approved. Mm -hmm. And she keeps on saying no. And she keeps on saying no. And she keeps on saying no. And um, so I go to Dale. I said, Dale, they're going to buy 15,000 hats. I mean, come on, Dale. He said, okay, let it go, Mattis. I soon found out what that meant. So we're on the airplane because I would fly to, you know, my my mentor was Dale. Yeah, you would. I, I fly to every race with him and go work the souvenir trailers and I fly back. And that's where I had all my one-on-one -on -one for two years in a row. I flew to every race with him. And Teresa would sit there looking at her magazines and open the page. She'd just wait for the right time and said, I said no to this. 
Mm. <laughs> and and uh, those gargoyles were on his face for a reason. He would turn his face and look outside, and he's the one who told me to go do it. <laughs> and I'd have to be there, and she's like, and he would be just not looking at me, and she'd be yelling at me. And I'm like, I got to go back and find out. I know you said no. I don't know how that slipped through. <laughs> uh, and, and let me get back to you. And, um, and that's what he meant by that. Uh, I, 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 and yeah. I always took all the bullets. Yep. She must have called me that dumb Mattis. <laughs> He's making a lot of mistakes, Dale. <laughs> but he did let me he approve stuff. <laughs> he had my back, but he just turned his head. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just it really, it's I mean, fun. Joe has been just a super integral part of licensing and the licensing business for NASCAR. I mean, he, you know, a number one, if you talk about NASCAR licensing, everybody in this sport from top to bottom would mention Joe's name. I mean, he's been like we've talked about, he's been in, you know, every situation imaginable, starting with my dad and, you know, going over to help out SMI and ISC and, and on and on and on. And it hasn't stopped to date. I've been super lucky that uh, we've been able to do this all these years. So fascinating stuff. I'm sure there's way more things and it's, it's, yeah. it's been so fun. It's a lot of stuff, yeah. a lot of, lot yeah. to pack in in yeah. a couple hours from yeah, well, a 30 year history. <laughs> I talk about the highs and lows. Oh, I know what I wanted to tell you. I know what it was. I know what it was. So you're talking about favorite products. <clears throat> so, and the Good Wrench account. So we had this hat, um, the shark tooth hat. Oh, yeah. And so it was a, a white hat, but it looked like shark fins with black. Mm. And some of them we had, you know, GM on the front, and then some we had the three on the front. Yeah. And, um, and that was the shark tooth hat. And, I mean, wildly successful. I... Don't know how many years we carried it and how many we sold, but wildly, wildly, wildly successful. So I'm in the airplane. Um, this was like a week after the drag races were here for Charlotte not too long ago. And um, I'm in the airplane, and the guy sitting next to me has a John Force T-shirt on, and he has a John Force hat on, and it's the shark hat, but it's John Force. And it was kind of dingy looking and everything, you know. And and so I, you know, was making conversation. I say, "Were here, were you here for the drag race?" He said, "No, I was here for something else." But he was dressed head to toe as a hmm. John Force fan. And I said, "Well, I'm just curious." I said, "How long have you had that hat?" And because I'm thinking he's going to tell me like 20 years, right? 22 years. And he goes, "I just got it last year." And I was like, "Oh wow!" I said, um, uh, "And so I end up telling him, you know, I said, you know, I was in the." licensing business for a long time and I said we made a hat for Dale Earnhardt like that that was just so successful and I was so it was so funny to see it it's carried on they like are. whoever does John Force's product it's a great hat it's carried on you know yeah. all these years and um, I mean that hat was massively successful that was, that was our number massively. one hat yeah yeah we did a black Massive. and red version yeah. and we went to a, a black and white for yeah. Um, GM yeah that's yeah. right that's right yeah. All right, I, I, let me. The, think the about number, how. the number was E two five one eight. Yeah, right. Wow. We always <laughs> laugh about that because, like, we all of our um, numbers as we started at Sports Image, we would have like, um, you know, E bottle. That you would got, be the that you, would. <laughs> you got mad at me the one time. E bear. Yes. Yeah, our, our coding system was pretty simple. Yeah, so we had this little <laughs> plush bear, and it would be E bear, or but then we would like we had E was for Earnhardt, obviously, and if it was Rusty Wallace, it was W or whatever, mm -hmm. and then the one meant for a T-shirt, a two was for a hat, a three was for whatever, a four was for yeah. women's, you know, so yeah. on and so forth, and then you know we'd be like E two thirty four, E one twenty three. And, and we have these iconic numbers that stick out in yeah, our head from yeah. those that were just so wildly successful. <laughs> yeah. This actually reminds me of something I wanted to ask you, you both. And between the shark tooth hat style and, Joe, you talking about Teresa's approval um, you know, process, if, the, if you will, I was curious if you ever became – if you ever um, established an understanding of, of, of the preferences that – her and Dale were going to approve or not? Like if there was ever a common understanding of of why things were not approved and th why things were. And the reason I'm really wondering that is because NASCAR merch really took off into this crazy space where the, the designs and the colors were like all over the place. And so you're talking about Shark Tooth 3 hat, which would have clearly been approved by Teresa and Dale, yeah. whereas a simple, clean, 
example that you were talking about just a few minutes ago, I thought I said no to that. Yeah. So I'm like, one could argue that these things got so loud. NASCAR merch is known for its loudness. Oh yeah, the all over print tees and 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 the yeah the big Massive. checkers and the orange and the black and the and, and all this stuff. Um, and I'm just I'm curious on those two things. One, did you? Did, is that a thing that her and Della embraced? They liked that? Were they a part of why it became that way? And if not, who did? What started the loudness of the marching, uh, the, the NASCAR style? I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. To, there was always total prints and there yeah. was always, um, there was colors. And now his car being black, I mean, that kind of, that, I, that themes you. But Ricky Rudd's car was bright. Tide was bright, so you know from that you have a lot of derivatives. So a lot of it's sponsor too, and how we embrace team colors and and that. So um, I don't know how many crazy colors we really got into Dale. Maybe we did. Yeah, maybe and, we didn't. Well, maybe it wasn't colors, but the design. I mean, I look at Dale Earnhardt people or Dale Earnhardt shirts today. I mean, there isn't a. There isn't a square inch of oh no we were in the canvas. Ink. You're using every yeah. piece of that shirt for some sort of graphic. I yeah. can't really think of of the specific things. Like we didn't have like a playbook that said no. we want to prove this or we want to prove that. We really had to go at them with every single design. Yeah, and um, yeah. The only thing I learned is if that visor was green, that hat was getting oh yeah, thrown at yeah. Me. yeah yeah. Oh right, because we could of use the no superstition. Green. <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah. So. And I no hate green. we'd get a super good hat and say say it was a shark tooth and and because they made a sample and it came in green I couldn't even show them like if it was a good design well just look at the hat and don't worry about the green no I had to wait for a new sample yeah I was always curious if like maybe Sam Bass's influence uh, started to kind of trickle over into the merchandise because his art was largely yeah. loud right yeah. like yeah. it was it was big colors and. Dale worked with Sam. Yeah. yeah he, a oh, lot. Yeah. A oh, lot. Yeah. 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 He embraced Sam. Did he design shirts, though? No. Sam, no. Not really? Mm -mm. Okay. No. 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 Oh, well. Bobby Moore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Th what, what, did you, what was your opinion of the Peter Max car? Sitting that right was over loud. There. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this one. Yeah. That was loud. I, w I mean, I was in college. And uh, was I in college? What year was this, Joe? It may have been 99-ish. Mm -hmm. That was later down the line. This did mm -hmm. not feel intimidator to me. <laughs> no, it wasn't. We did a Wheaties in 97. That looked good. Yeah, that was a fun car. But what 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 happened here? I, I feel like that was a Teresa thing. That the Peter Max was like a yeah. upscale design. You know, I mean, obviously Art, he was yeah, a major yeah, artist. Yeah. But, I mean, I think that was more along those lines. Yeah, I wasn't of, there for that. Yeah. You weren't? Yeah. No. Gladly? <laughs> I mean, I... Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> you don't <want> to... <laughs> All right, do you like this car or not? Did you like this? Is this one of your favorites? It was one of the least sellers. It was not wildly a favorite. It was yeah. one of the least sellers. Yeah, so I didn't yeah. like it. Yeah. It's a yeah. shocker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I think... Tell your statistic about the top 25 diecasts, like what um, my dad and Dale's diecast, like of the top 25, they make up. Do you have that handy? I, I, I would, no, I don't, but the Olympics... Yeah, and ends up being P1. like pretty much of the twenty five spaces they occupy. Oh, probably more than half oh, to three easy. quarters. It yeah. would, yeah. I would say yeah. fifteen yeah. Uh, plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Father yeah. and son. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, let me see I if mean, I you, can take a guess you, here. You take baseball paint schemes got to be in there. Yeah, certainly. Um, the final Exalta car, the trivia final, car, mm -hmm. the big paint scheme, big one, huh? Yeah, the kickoff of both. Um, 08's cars, both of them real, real big. Um, Another interesting the, fact. The Wrangler car. Yeah. Xfinity. Hey, Sundrop late model was number four yeah. last year. Of all the cup drivers, our, our Sundrop late model, and I and I, I wore out Howard Hitchcock from Lionel. You better you better rank Howard's like this is just a cup ranking. I'm like no, I want <laughs> I want that dang Sundrop it's a rank. ass ranking. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, so that was number four last year. Yeah. So Dale Earnhardt had the Wheaties, the Peter Max, the Silver the, Olympics, the Olympics. Am I missing a special paint scheme? Yeah. Or is there a Bass Pro Taz, paint scheme? When, when the ba you, Bass the, Pro Gold wasn't it? Yeah. The gold Bass one. Pro Gold. Yeah. Tasmanian Devil, the Taz with Warner Brothers. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dale Jr., I would say, I mean, gosh, he's had so many special paints. Yeah, the DMP. 
like well, the when he Gossamer. Won, when he won the Batman, I mean, yeah, the Michigan Batman. race. Oh, yeah. How did that go? Yeah. Very well. Yeah. Very well. Huh? Yeah. Now, there's a thing we don't do anymore, but we worked with Warner Brothers, had a good relationship. That is timing. That's 18 months yeah. out, 12 months out, because you got to get rights of a, a pretty back to that Olympic thing. Who's bigger than who? <laughs> I mean, yeah. so you got to acquire rights, and um, we had a real good relationship with them. And um, that car did extremely well. What about when Dale Jr. Uh, did the Mountain Dew car at Darlington? Did that do well? Remember that? It kind of, it kind of looked like a Daryl Waltrip. Yeah, basement. it wasn't Waltrip. I'm sure it did. Like, didn't. There's a lot to remember. Over the years. <laughs> <laughs> like at some point, it doesn't pop out as like a massive the, one. The, but the yeah. special paint yeah. scheme. Would you agree? I, I don't know if you uh, are are a fan of them or not, but it feels like it became. It, less special and well, more yeah, because we're doing saturated. It often. Yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, it, yeah. It has to be relevant. It has to be authentic. It has to have a story. It has to have a story. Yeah, hey, it's got to have a purpose. Here's one thing: because Sports Image did so well with um, Dale's Winston and his Olympic, Rusty Wallace asked us to help him in his 25th um, tribute. Mm-hmm. So we. Sports Image, what became a distributor of Rusty Wallace's, and at that time we were only Dale Earnhardt Company. Right, that's right. Um, but we just we we knocked those two off so well. Um, his paint that was a big. Um, I don't know, it was it Rusty Wallace twenty fifth tribute or whatever it was? We did that mm. as well. That's cool. Uh, listen, it's been fun. This it's been, been fun. Th- We've th- got to work and do. I mean, I you know thinking about Rusty Wallace, we got to work with Elvis Presley Enterprises. Yeah. on programs. Oh, that's right. I mean, we have got to do some cool stuff. You know, I got to go to Graceland with Rusty and, and on that program. I mean, there's the, the Warner Brothers relationships and things like that. And we've really worked with some amazing companies and corporations and people in the same business that has been. Hey, if you like that video, like and comment below. And don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another piece of Dirty Mo Media content.